Hi guys, Gaming Bear here. Today I'm doing a review of the BDR G1B Tier 5 French Heavy Tank. And you may know, it's not a very good tank. I'm going to start off with that. So, looking at it and saying, okay, why isn't it such a good tank? Well, you've got this fantastic 90mm gun, which is really good. And you've got okay armour. But why is it not so good? Well, it just doesn't seem to come together as a package. And I've been playing it and coming out with about 48, 49% wins. I'll show you a mastery which I just got earlier today. But why is it not really working? Well, what you tend to find with the with the, the French tanks is that you've got a good gun. And then they come up with something that's even stronger and more powerful. But it's incredibly inaccurate. Like, you see the 75mm, the SA-44, 2.1 second aim time, dispersion of uh, 0.43. You've then got the... Uh, the the 90mm, 2.5 second aim time, 0.4 accuracy. So the accuracy of 0.4, yes, is better, but the 2.3 in comparison to the uh, the 2.5 second is horrendous. And you can never seem to quite get the uh, the gun on target when you want it to be there, and the time in between shots is quite significant. Let's have a look at uh, more closely the uh, the details on the tank. So comparing it directly to the KV-1, which is a really healthy way to do it. We're looking at the DPM being down by almost 600, uh, but almost 400. So the KV's got 2,002, this has got 1,580 with the top gun. The damage per shot, the Alpha, is 80 more, which is quite nice. Penetration is an, an additional 15 mil of pen, so it's better that way. But the reload time is a problem. It's, almost two shots to one with the uh, the KV. The KV can just keep pumping shots into you and you can never, because of the mobility or the immobility of this, you can't quite get away and the armour isn't good enough to be able to uh, to deal with the KV-1 effectively. So you've got to try and aim at range, work at range, bring the gun to bear and hasn't got the accuracy and the speed to allow you to do that, which seems to be the, uh, the, the problem. The gun's dispersion according to this is showing that it's uh, 0.38 seconds but it's saying that it's uh, a 0.4 with the, uh, the the standard gun, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. It should be more accurate, but it doesn't seem to be in real uh, in practice. The aim time is worse with the uh, the BDR than the KV. Then we look at the uh, the shell velocity. It's, it's actually better, 800 meters per second. View range, uh, ammo capacity. We're actually running 48 shots instead of uh, 76. But if you hit them all, you can do a, a lot of damage over time. Now the top speed, it's close. 30 kph to 40, the reverse speed is the same, and the power to weight ratio is 12.2, so it should be better than the KV. Now, why isn't it? Well, we're looking really at the uh, the armour. 60 instead of uh, 75, 75, 70, so 60, 40, 60. And then on the, uh, the turret, it's 80 mil at its strongest point in comparison to 110. So everywhere on the KV is more, uh, it's be better armoured. So let's have a look at the uh, terrain resistance. The terrain resistance is better on the KV. On hard, medium is the same. Soft terrain is better on the KV. So even though it hasn't got the power to weight ratio, the KV's got uh, better top speed. It's better around the battlefield. And the BDR just isn't doesn't quite have it. Now gun depression. The KV's got uh, the g gun elevation. The gun depression and elevation, the BDR, is 7 degrees worse. And... Okay, it's one degree better gun depression, which is quite nice. So that's that's a nice a nice addition. But at that point, you haven't really got a lot of help. So we'll have a look at the, the armor model, see how well it would run on top of a hill. Toe traverse, two degrees better, which is nice. Let's have a look. View range, 10 meters more, which is nice. It's quite useful to have that additional 10 meters. It doesn't make a lot of difference, but it, it can help. It can give you the the edge in a long-range engagement, which is where you should try and uh, work this. But it's a, it's a problem when the, the the tank is closed, the the view range doesn't actually help. You've then got the problem with the uh, the the DPM ability of the KV just completely overmatching you. Let's switch to the uh, the second gun, the SA44. Now this is a better, uh, better situation. You've got DPM, which is only two hundred worse. So, so yes, eighteen hundred instead of uh, two thousand. Penetration is down by twenty, so it's a, it's a factor. 
But I suppose if you're getting close, then the le lack of penetrative ability isn't so good because you're up close. Quicker reload time, so you can pump those shots in. So it's very good at dealing with mediums. So potentially, like uh, with other uh, tank destroyers on the French line, you don't really want to go for, until you've got an exceptional crew and very, very good, you don't really want to go for the, the top gun because the French generally go for powerful but inaccurate guns. And this could be an option until you're good enough with the BDR to move the crew on or keep them in the BDR if you like playing it. The aim time and dispersion is better with this with this gun, but it's the penetrative ability which l lets you down. If you are in that situation, then the penetration you can put up to 129 if you need to for set targets. So you've got the option. So I'm thinking the best gun for this, the, the BDR, in standard work is the 75 mil so you've then got the additional 100 and, uh, yeah say to 200 uh, of damage that you can deal with it so let's have a look at the uh, the 3d model so looking at the armor model he's firing down over a ridge at you firing straight at you you're facing this the armor is from about uh, 98 mil going across and down to this area because they are sloping you're looking about 100 10 to 120 mil a little bit weak area here flat surface and the lower plate you're looking at 130 to 140 mil so you've got potential bounces beyond the tracks you come into the the side air, side skirts and you've got the equivalent of about 115 mil going up to about 170 180 mil so you've got a very good track area so if you fire over the other uh, tracks this way you can maximize your uh, your arm protection now looking at the, the turret you've got a weak area here which is 60 mil and the commander's cupola about 60 65 mil at the top the turret itself you're looking 80 mil these side areas if you get if you move back and forth you can potentially uh, turn your arm and protection into about 104 mil it's on the other side the angling sloping so if you're waggling the turret you can go between uh, about 105 and 130 mil depending on how uh, how well you're angling and moving the uh, the turret so the armor is a potential uh, a potential use to you but anyone with a penetrative ability of about 120 can get through in certain areas like the the hatch here is a weak spot but all they have to do is, is aim for the weak spot here or even the flat surface around the gun so it's the armor you shouldn't take as being uh, really helpful to you so working with the uh, the 75 mil Use this to uh, take out the mediums first, and then assist your team to uh, to help out the and take out the uh, the heavier tanks later. So let's get back to the garage. So back to the uh, the tank. This is the standard setup which most people go for with the 19 mil, but potentially the best gun is the 75 mil SA44. So we're going to do a uh, show a game in a minute of how you can get a mastery in this with the uh, the top 90 mil gun. And then in future, I'm going to try and run this with the 75 uh, mil, and we can see how well it actually works, and if it's if it's better at winning with the 75 mil in comparison to the uh, the, the 90 mil. That if that DPM advantage that the the 75 mil gives you over the 90 is worth the extra penetrative ability that you get with the 90 mil. So we'll work out the best way of doing this. But I've got a feeling that the 75 mil will be the best option for you. So let's get into that replay. Okay, let's get into that game. So we're on Ensk, and it's a yeah, a tier five game. So Churchill, uh, Churchill three is opposing, and uh, KV as well as an OI are opposing us. So let's see what we can do from here. So I'm going to head over to this area around about J J three. Use the buildings there to control the center see what we can do and use the uh, penetrative ability trying to keep the tank at range and use the uh, the gun to be well to penetrate and kill your opponents so let's see what we can do so speed up slightly move into position watch out for the little toldy dude so come in fire over get set up ready for them coming in Yes. And there's an OI, but I pulled back, ready to uh, just reload. Let's get set up again. Let's see if we can get a shot in. 
Oh, experimental. Here he comes. I fired a shot. Must have just bounced on him. His armor's very, very good. Pull back slightly to uh, to reload. Oh, four damage left. Almost took him out. So we'll try and get a shot in on the uh, the Churchill. And I'm loading APCR. Bounced again. He's armor. he's really working his armor. Let's try and get a shot in on the uh, the Churchill. Good damaged. shot. Now he's bouncing. Even Churchill three is bouncing on us. Trying to shot in. Yes, in through the side. Hetzer's shooting at us. I'm trying to take this guy out. How? Where's the Hetzer? Oh, he's over there. Okay. Oh yes, he's gone. High caliber already. Pulling back, ready to reload. He's. He knows I'm. Uh, I may come there, but I don't. I don't want to do that. So I've repositioned to, to make the most of uh, of uh, my abilities. He's pushing around over towards C five. So I'm watching out seven eight. And I notice the uh, LT pushing up. No one that way. Let's... Ready to fire. Got him. And then I see the Sherman coming in. So try and get ready. He's gone. Four kills. Now we've got the KV. KV and a HET to, to deal with here. Now you've got the uh, the DPM advantage. If you pull back, well, he's got the DPM advantage, but by pulling back, I don't allow him to take the shot. So I'm gaining shot wise because he's doing about 160 damage and I'm doing an additional 80 points of damage per shot. So I'm coming around this way, try and get a shot in, and now I notice the OI is from there. Luckily, I bounced him. Try a snapshot. I should have waited, but I saw him disappearing, so I thought uh, better of it. WN8 at the moment of uh, 5793, 1800 damage. And we've got the KV um, to deal with, and we're 664, six, so it's doable. I don't know how that missed. Could have been a bit of a server lag. He took out the tracks and he's gone. Got so 5-3, it's looking okay. So we've got our OI. So let's speed this up. We're going on a hunt. Four three. He's just taken out the uh, SFL. So I've just asked for this cruiser to scout just so we know where they are. Let's speed up a little bit. Shots in, no. Move up, see what we can do. I'm trying to swing round. Try and flank. The mobility in town is still okay. So I'm trying to get round, flank. He's doing, doing a good job. So we've got the um, F30 to deal with. And see, 26 kph. So I'm going to try and flank slightly out to the uh, the left. Don't know where the OI is at the moment. So it's now two on two on one. Enemy armor is damaged. Just get him. So he's now 159 health. Let's speed this up. I'm thinking, okay, I'll push around. I want to try and spot where the OI is as well. There's a 28. He's gone. Okay, Top Gun, six kills, but I don't know where the OI is. So speed this up. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to uh, go to Cap, try and draw him towards me. So I'm looking for the guy. Pushing in. And there's a neat spot just over here by the rubble, so I'm going to try and get ready, angle ready for him, and get prepared. So I turn the uh, the hull to face one direction, and I'm turning the turret to face another. And I'm waiting. 
and saying two captors, which isn't right. Ready to fire. So there I am, ready, and it showed that it was Let's aiming at him. Target. I fired, and that should have taken this him out. But as you saw with the reticule, it showed that it was on him, but it must have been a server lag. And I fired, and it just missed the front of his tank, which lost us the game. That could have potentially, that one shot, which I thought was on target, could have won us the game. Seven kills, fantastic game, but because of a bit of server lag, I didn't kill him and he took me out instead. So a bit of a pity, but that's how you can get a, a mastery in this tank and just give it that little bit longer so you don't get the server lag. But I didn't want to risk him shooting me and I thought I was on target, so that's just a pity. So let's have a look at the post-game stats. WN8 uh, 9925, so quite good. Top gun, high caliber, ace tanker. Not a bad show. Killed six enemy tanks and managed to do almost two and a half thousand damage. So quite an okay show, as you saw. So let's see. 726 base experience for a year, uh, a loss. And full details 17 shots, 13 hit, 11 pent. So quite, quite a good penetrative ability. The problem with the gun is the inaccuracy, and as you saw at the end, um, I had a, a server lag which caused a bit of a problem, so I didn't take him out on the one-on-one, -on -one, which is a real shame, but that sort of thing is what you'd need to watch out for, and it could happen to anyone. So credit-wise, 44,000, plus a bonus, and we we broke even. Experience, 1,089, plus a bonus to give us 1,701 experience. So looking at the uh, the tank itself, is it, oh, time, uh, let's have a look at bounces, do we bounce any shots? We managed to bounce uh, a thousand points, so it was it was effective. You saw the tank itself is quite a good effective tank, and it's good around the battlefield. You have to be able to bring it on, to, to, on target, which is helped by the, uh, the enhanced gun lane drive and the ability to see these optics give you a view range of 377 meters, which is very useful. So this is how you can get a mastery in the BDR G1, leading you up to the uh, the next tank for the ARL 44. So we'll have a look and move on to uh, to that at uh, a later stage. But this is the uh, BDR G1. That 90 mil is very effective. Standard pen 135 mil, but it's it's 90 mil, so it can help with the uh, the normalization of the rounds because of that uh, that normalization ability. Of the standard shells with the APCR bumping the, uh, the penetrative ability up to 175 to allow you to get through tougher targets at range with the 90 mil okay we're going back we put the uh, the tier 5 75 mil the, the SA 44 gun on let's see how well this works it's, it's in a, uh, a tier 6 game 32 percent uh, win chance let's see how well this rocks or not so let's see what, see what we can actually do. So we're tier 5 in a heavily tier 6 game. They've, there's a lot of medium action. So let's get into a position to be able to assist the mediums. If they're pushing into town, we've got a, a, an OI and a 150, which this gun is going to struggle with penetrating, penetrating even a little bit. So I'm going to help with the uh, the Cromwells and against the uh, Type 58 and the 3002. Use the additional DPM of this uh, this gun. And being able to hopefully help hold the uh, the medium area and help the uh, let's get this show on the road the SPGs to win the game. So we're going to move up behind these buildings and try and get into a position so we can work and allow the uh, uh, aim down use the this gun depression to allow us to shoot over the ridge and be able to assist the team. So if we can get uh, spots from the uh, the chaffy. See, see how fast this uh, this aims now with the, uh, the the additional aiming and this being a slightly faster to aim gun. So let's go up the ridge a little bit, angle slightly. See if we can get some bushes in between us. Keep spotting over towards uh, D zero and aim into the centre. Try and get spots from the chaffy. Assist the medium. Uh, Matilda four. Pull back a bit more. Can we still get the gun down? That's the best we can do. 
Need a bit more, there we go. Right. So it looks like they're pushing hard in the middle. Their VK, the T25, are in the centre. So they're pushing hard. We've got hardly anyone on this side, but so they, they're the same. Oh, I was pushing in. So we will push in to assist. So the mobility coming up to that uh, top speed of, uh, of 30 kph, 32, 33. So the mobility is okay. So let's see what we can do. So look at the uh, the size of the gun reticule as we're moving. It's quite horrendous. So you don't want to be firing at range. You want to be able to get into position, use the gun at range. Here we go, 58, which we were hoping to deal with. So the 110. 100 mil of penetration. Let's see if we can actually. Let's try and aid the team that way. Can we get any shots in? Guns firing slow. Enemy is hit! Enemy armor is damaged! So, a couple of shots in to assist to it. Looking into the centre, but we're losing. They're completely ripping us a new one because our OI was out of position and yeah so he needs some assistance penetration so the penetration even at this range is still quite good penetration keep the shots going in so we can try and come in round behind us Hit. Critical hit. Took his tracks off. Penetration. Don't block me, dude. Come on. Enemy oh, come hit. on. Hit. Stop blocking me. What's he, what's he doing? What sort of an idiot is he? We've lost the track. Enemy armor is hit. One of our tracks is damaged. Penetration. That one didn't go through. Drive on! We didn't even scratch them! Team of idiots! Ricochet! See, the, the 90 mil would have uh, given us a chance of doing something. Critical hit! Oh, what board. can Everyone you do when down. the team is so stupid? Let's have a look at the details. So, um, oh, Cromwell was damaging our own team. The OI, 42%. And I don't even want to mention that he's Polish. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and so the gun, even in this, isn't so good. But we still came out with 1,000 damage. So, uh, WNA of uh, 1674. So, in, in light of that, the, it is quite an effective option. So let's have a look at the post-game stats, see how this is uh, is rocking and rolling at the moment. Okay, let's have a look. So, WN8 of 18-19, uh, which is okay on a loss. Damage, so 9 shots in, 1,000 damage and 300 spotting. So the tank itself is quite effective. Tier 6 game, we did pretty well. Just a pity about the Polish person in the OI who didn't have a clue about what he was doing. And... But the, the 75 mil seems like an option. So shots six, 16 hit out of 18 and of those 9 penned. So the, the penetration is an issue. So even with uh, firing that many shots, 1,000 damage is okay. So in comparison to what it's been doing before, the average is 641. The tier 5, this is a, an option. I, I would, And this was a tier 6 game. So to be able to deal with those other those tanks in that way, I believe that the the 75 mil has got options. Even though when you then come to uh, to face those heavier tier six tanks, you then lose out. So this is very good at dealing with the the lighter tanks, keeping the gun firing and being able to get to flank and get in. But the, like I said before, the issue with this is that the it hasn't got the uh, the, the flanking ability. Because you've only got a top speed of, of 30. It's a heavy, which doesn't play like a heavy. So the, if you're going up against, and there's a lot of heavies in the meta, 
then the best one to go for is the, uh, the DC-30. The DPM isn't as good, but the penetrative ability, as you saw, that we only managed to penetrate half the shots we fired. If you can get, get it on target and keep the gun firing, this is, I would say, a better option than the, uh, the 75mm. So you just have to f hit one shot out of two and it penetrate to be up DPM-wise in comparison to the uh, the 75 mil. So this would gives you gives you more options in the battlefield, will allow you to fire at range, and will allow you to bring that uh, 411 meter view range into um, into effect and help the battle. So this is the BDR. I'm the Gaming Bear. See you on the next one. Cheers, guys.